8. Soviet submarine. The K-3 Leninsky Komsomol, the first nuclear-powered submarine in the Soviet Navy's lineup, was moved to the Museum of Naval Glory in Kronstadt, a base near St. Petersburg, Russia, back in October 2022. The sub was officially part of Project 627, or the November class, and was designed to destroy enemy aircraft carriers. The K-3 first made history in 1962, when it became the first sub to reach the North Pole under ice. The K-3 also has a tragic history. In 1961, it caught on fire and had an explosion that killed 39 crew members. The sub was also contaminated with radiation. Then, in 1985, it collided with a U.S. Navy submarine in the Barents Sea, causing severe damage to both vessels. In 1989, it was finally decommissioned and laid up at a naval yard in Severodvinsk. In 2022, after decades of neglect, the K-3 was restored and moved to Kronstadt. The submarine was towed along the White Sea Baltic Canal and the Neva River, passing through several bridges. The journey took two weeks and attracted massive public attention. The K-3 is now a permanent exhibit at the Museum of Naval Glory, which showcases the rich history and many achievements of the Russian Navy. The museum also features other historic ships, like the cruiser Aurora and the icebreaker Krasin. The K-3 sub is a symbol of Soviet naval prowess and a reminder of the not-so-distant Cold War era. Number 7. Taliban's U.S. Vehicles One of the consequences that came after the U.S. withdrew from Afghanistan in 2021 was that the Taliban took control of thousands of U.S. military vehicles that were left behind. The vehicles included armored carriers, mine-resistant cars, Humvees, Scan Eagle drones, and more. The Taliban captured these vehicles from military bases, airports, and checkpoints that they overran as they quickly took control of the country. Some of the vehicles were abandoned by Afghan soldiers, while others were surrendered or taken by force. The Taliban used these vehicles to showcase their victory and to bolster their fighting capabilities against resistance members. They also moved some of the vehicles to the Iranian border, where they had a skirmish with border guards over the access to the Helmand River back in May of 2023. The U.S. government tried to stop the Taliban from using these cars by disabling some of them before leaving Afghanistan. But these efforts were not enough to prevent the Taliban from getting their hands on the large and diverse fleet that was initially paid for by American taxpayers. The seizure of these vehicles raised concerns about the security implications for the region and the rest of the world. The cars could be used by the Taliban to oppress the native Afghan people, attacking neighboring countries, or be sold to other militant groups. The vehicles could also reveal sensitive information or technology that was once exclusive to the U.S. to the Taliban. Number 6. Tanks Shifted to Stop Russia in 2014, the U.S. Army had to move hundreds of tanks and armored vehicles from Germany to Eastern Europe thanks to a NATO initiative set in place to deter Russian aggression. The vehicles were transported by rail, road, and sea across multiple countries. The relocation was a response after Russia's annexation of Crimea and its support for separatists in eastern Ukraine, which set off alarms for NATO allies in the region. So, the U.S. and NATO wanted to calm their partners and demonstrate their commitment to defense. The vehicles belonged to the U.S. Army's 1st Brigade, 1st Cavalry Division. They were part of the European Activity Set, or EAS, a pre-positioned stockpile of equipment that can be quickly deployed for training or other operations. The vehicles included 29 M1A2 Abrams tanks, 33 M2A3 Bradley Infantry Fighting Vehicles, 16 M109A6 Paladin self-propelled howitzers, and 18 M99-2A2 Field Artillery Ammunition Support Vehicles. There were also trucks, trailers, generators, and more. They arrived by ship in the northern port of Bremerhaven, Germany on January 6, 2014, before being loaded onto trains and moved to locations in Poland, Lithuania, Latvia, Estonia, Romania, and Bulgaria. The vehicles were used by about 4,000 U.S. troops who participated in exercises and training with NATO's allies. 
The relocation was part of Operation Atlantic Resolve, a series of ongoing efforts by the US and NATO to enhance security and stability across the whole of Europe. The operation also involves rotational deployments of US forces, joint exercises, infrastructure improvements, as well as information sharing. Number five, guard technicians restore vehicles. In order to truly showcase the story of the guard, New York National Guard maintenance specialists helped with the renovation of vintage cars back in 2013. The vehicles included an M4A3 Sherman tank, an M8 Greyhound armored car, and even an M3A1 half-track. They were moved from different locations to the New York State Military Museum in Saratoga Springs. The relocation of the vehicles was a challenging task since they were old and fragile. The technicians had to use cranes, forklifts, trailers, and even a few flatbed trucks to move the vehicles safely. They also had to coordinate with local authorities and police teams to ensure smooth traffic while doing so. The renovation of the vehicles was a whole different ballgame full of labor-intensive and meticulous processes, as they had to be cleaned, repaired, painted, and restored to their original glory. The technicians used their skills to fix the mechanical and electrical problems, replace the missing or damaged parts, and apply the correct markings. They also researched the history and specifications of each car to ensure both accuracy and authenticity. The vehicles were part of the museum's collection of over 10,000 artifacts that illustrate the history and role the New York National Guard played from the colonial era to the modern day. The museum also features multiple exhibits, displays, and programs that educate the public about the Guard's contributions to the country. The relocation and renovation of the historic cars were a way of preserving and continuing the legacy of the New York National Guard and its members. The vehicles were not only symbols of military power and technology, but also a reminder of courage and sacrifice. They remain a source of pride and inspiration for the current and future generations of Guardsmen. What do you think about the Guard? Let us know in the comments below and subscribe to the channel if you've enjoyed the video so far. Number 4. From Reefs to Museums On December 7, 1941, Japan launched a history-defining surprise attack on Pearl Harbor, a U.S. naval base in Hawaii. Among the weapons used by the Japanese were five mini-subs, each carrying two crew members and two torpedoes. Their goal was to infiltrate the harbor and target the U.S. Navy battleships. But none of the mini-subs succeeded. Four of them were either sunk or destroyed by enemy forces, and one of them, HA-19, was stranded on a reef way outside the harbor. The submarine was eventually spotted by a U.S. patrol plane and attacked. The crew tried to purposefully sink the sub, but only one of them managed to escape. The other, Kazuo Sakamaki, was captured after he washed ashore. He became the first Japanese prisoner of war. The US Navy salvaged the submarine and studied its design thoroughly. They also used it as a propaganda tool to boost morale among Americans. The sub was toured around the country to promote the sale of war bonds, which were used to finance the war it was showcased in various cities, attracting crowds of curious onlookers who wanted to see the weapon. In 1943, it was donated to the Admiral Nimitz Museum in Fredericksburg, Texas, where it has remained to this day. The museum is now part of the National Museum of the Pacific War, which honors the legacy of Admiral Chester W. Nimitz, who commanded the U.S. Pacific Fleet in World War II. The sub is mounted on a wall inside the museum where visitors can see its sleek black hull, conning tower, and torpedoes intact. It is a fascinating artifact that tells a story of courage, failure, and fate. Number 3. Soviet Submarines Final Voyage During the Cold War, the Soviet Navy sent out a fleet of diesel-electric submarines to spy on U.S. and NATO warships. One of these submarines was B-39, a Foxtrot-class sub commissioned in 1967. It served for over 20 years. B-39 was one of the largest non-nuclear submarines ever built and carried up to 24 torpedoes, some of which could deliver nuclear warheads. B-39 was assigned to the Soviet Pacific Fleet and patrolled through the North Pacific, the Indian Ocean, and the Arctic Ocean. In 1989, B-39 had a close encounter with a U.S. Navy frigate in the middle of the Sea of Japan where both crews took photos of each other. 
B-39 was later decommissioned in 1994 and sold off to Finland. From there, it changed hands several times and somehow ended up in Seattle, Washington in 2002. In 2005, it was purchased by the Maritime Museum of San Diego, California, where it became both an exhibit and an interactive attraction. The museum installed a video, light, and sound production inside the sub called To the Brink of War, which simulated a nuclear crisis scenario. The exhibit aimed to educate visitors about the history of the Cold War. But the submarine also faced many challenges and risks. It was seized by the Romanian authorities thanks to unpaid debts and taxes and had to be released after years of legal battles. It also suffered from corrosion due to saltwater exposure and weather. It required constant maintenance and repairs, which were expensive. And in 2021, the museum decided to withdraw the sub from its collection and scrap it all together, citing public safety reasons and lack of funds. The fate of B-39 reflects the changing times and circumstances that affect both military equipment and human lives. Number 2. Arctic Nuclear Subs Lifted In 2020, Russia successfully completed a major operation to lift two Soviet nuclear submarines and four reactor compartments up and out of the Arctic Ocean, reducing the amount of radioactive material in the area's water by 90%. The project was part of Russia's efforts to clean up its nuclear past and protect the environment from contamination. The two nuclear subs, K-27 and K-159, were among the six that sank in the Arctic waters between 1965 and 2003. They held about one million curies of radiation. The submarines posed a serious threat to the marine ecosystem as well as human health, since they could leak radioactive substances into the ocean. The operation to lift the submarines was taken on by a special vessel called Mikhail Rudnitsky, which was equipped with a crane. The vessel had to overcome harsh weather conditions, strong currents, and thick ice to reach the sunken subs, which were at a depth of 33 and 248 meters, between 108 feet and 814 feet. The vessel also had to deal with risks of explosion, because the submarines had torpedoes and missiles on board. The lifting process involved attaching cables and slings to the subs and slowly raising them to the surface. They were then placed on a floating dock and towed to a shipyard. The reactor compartments were cut off from the hulls and sealed away inside special containers. They will be stored at a secure site until they can be properly disposed of safely. The operation was a historic achievement by Russian officials and international experts. It was part of a larger program called LEPSI whose goal is to remove all radioactive waste from the Arctic by 2030. The program is supported by the European Union, Norway, and other countries. Russia hopes that by cleaning up its tainted nuclear legacy, it will improve its image with other Arctic nations. And at number one, tanks relocated from Syria. In 2018, Israel moved dozens of tanks and armored personnel carriers from its border with Syria to its border with Gaza during escalating tensions with Hamas. The move was viewed as a sign of Israel's readiness to respond to attacks from Gaza. The tanks were part of the 188th Armored Brigade, or the Barak Brigade, which deployed in the Golan Heights in 2014. The brigade was equipped with Merkava Mark IV tanks, which are considered among the most advanced and protected tanks on Earth. They have a 120mm smoothbore gun, a 60mm mortar, and a remote-controlled machine gun. They also have an active protection system called Trophy, which can intercept and destroy incoming missiles if necessary. The armored personnel carriers were M113s, which are used to transport infantry and also provide fire support. The M113s have a 12.7mm machine gun and can carry 11 soldiers. They're armored against small fire and shrapnel, but are vulnerable to anti-tank weapons as well as mines. The relocation of the tanks and armored personnel carriers was a response to the Hamas and other militant groups that have been launching rockets, incendiary balloons, and explosive devices at Israel. It is necessary to note that Israel had also been conducting airstrikes and artillery strikes against Hamas targets in Gaza during this time. The relocation was intended to reinforce Israel's deterrence and send a message to Hamas that their country would not tolerate any further aggression. The relocation was also a reflection of the changing security in Syria, where the civil war had been winding down and the threat from Iran and Hezbollah had been significantly reduced. 
Israel was concerned about the presence of Iranian forces and proxies near its border and carried out several strikes against them. But after a Russian plane was accidentally shot down by Syrian air defenses in September of 2018, Russia deployed advanced S-300 anti-aircraft systems to Syria, which limited Israel's freedom in the airspace. The relocation of the tanks and armored carriers was a strategic decision that showed Israel's ability to adapt to different threats. It also demonstrated the country's commitment to defend its sovereignty and security from any and all enemies. We hope you enjoyed learning about these amazing and risky operations. These are just a few of the stories that show how much effort and courage it takes to deal with the consequences of war. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more. And let us know in the comments what you think about these stories, or if you have any suggestions for future topics. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye for now.